All right. So I've been actually looking forward to this uh, pretty much all day because I talked to this person last night. I actually got to talk to his uncle. And oh, yeah. And I texted you earlier today, and I was like, you know what? Even though he's two hours behind, he's got to be hungover because you guys – were getting fucked up last night, and it. Well, I mean, it did. You didn't say that, but it just sounded like you guys were having a great time last night. So explain to me what was going on at the um, uh, Charlie Alamo compound last night. Well, it ain't my compound, man. I was over at my mom and her husband's house, and we they were having a barbecue, and yeah. uh, a bunch of family came over. Yeah, there was drinks. I drank shit. I started. Friday night, so I was already ahead of the game. So what were um, you drinking? Everything, man. What wasn't I drinking should have been the thing. I remember I was like soaking watermelon and booze and walking around and eating it and shit. I was out of control. Man. You know what, though? Listen, I feel better that I don't drink anymore, but I would be lying if I didn't say I missed it. Like, I really do miss it. Yeah, drinking is one thing. If I had to give it up, it probably would be hard, but I could do it. Smoking weed would be another story. I got to be able to take a couple coughs. So let me ask you this, okay? Now, a lot of people, you know how radio trolls can be. Sure. Um, you know, because I, I say that I'm completely clean, but I talk about smoking weed and everyone's like, well, you're not clean. You're smoking weed. You know what? I don't look at weed as one of those hardcore things. As a matter of fact, I would mm. rather, I think smoking weed is way better and, and safer than drinking. I agree with you. It's actually, uh, there's this guy that comes into the dispensary that I work at, and he doesn't do heroin anymore. Now he just smokes a bunch <laughs> of dabs. And I was like, well, I mean, at least you're not doing heroin, so... But I, I mean, that's what it like, takes. Hey. this is how I look at, and I think we've talked about this before. Um, this is the way I look at substances that change. If it comes naturally out of nature and you don't have to do anything to process it, like marijuana and mushrooms, like I, I think that is completely natural and I have no problem with it. Yeah. What about coca leaves? Yeah, but they gotta they gotta do shit to get it going. I mean, you no, can't I'm talking about straight, them out. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking straight leaves right off the plant. That's what they're picking and they're eating, so they can keep working. Oh, then I I'm fine with that. I mean, I know that there's poisonous things in nature that can kill you, but what I'm saying is, I mean, if you're not having to like chemically or you know engineer it, I have no problem with it. If it comes straight out of the nature it should not be against the law no it i agree with you 100 percent. and it wasn't for well weed was you know but shrooms and stuff like and peyote and all kinds of others you know stuff like that shamans and stuff still use peyote they're still tripping on stuff so why can't all of so, us so you had this party last night now was this yep. something that was planned or just put together at the last minute no this was planned this was actually the third one that they've done this was the third year of it it didn't look like it was going to happen with covid shit but then you know there's not that many cases up here people weren't like i don't know kissing each other i don't know how else you can get it nobody was sick here so now is it your your mom's side or your dad's side my mom, mom, my dad's, uh, my yeah, my dad's side of the family all lives back east. Now, now, so I spoke to your uncle last night. I got to tell you, he yeah. was a pretty cool guy. I now, let me ask you though. Last night, I heard that you had rattlesnake on the menu. Yes. How was yes. it? It was great. I um, grilled one and then I fried one, and now, the fried one was awesome. Now, do you buy it, or did you guys catch this rattlesnake on your own? No, my mom, my mom's husband shot him. They're all over the place up here, man. Yeah. 
It's crazy. Now, I've eaten them before. What, what is the weird? Well, you've been to Florida before. What is the weirdest shit that you've ever eaten? Like, I, I would say armadillo is maybe one of the weirdest fucking things I've ever eaten. And a lot of people don't know this okay. about armadillo is that they carry leprosy. Oh. But I, I, I think if you cook it, like, I mean, not all armadillos carry leprosy, but what I'm saying is you got to make sure you cook it well. And I got to tell you, it was not that bad. Huh. I would say the, the weirdest thing that I had was actually in Florida. I had a uh, live baby octopus one time, and it was oh, a one and done deal. I mean, I, I've had octopus before. I mean, there were so many weird things. Oh, you know, anything with tentacles creeped me out. Yeah. Um, now, we're kind of in this whole thing because of the, oh, yeah, you're definitely hungover. You're, yeah, you're chugging water. the water. What time oh, did yeah. you get up today? Um, I woke up at like 7.30. And yeah, but then you were like, fuck water. this. Yeah, I started pounding water and fucking like almost snorting aspirin to try to get it into my system quick. So, yeah. Uh, it, but I'm I'm doing fine now. I just feel I it was way too much sun, man. Honestly, the I don't think the booze was the most majority of the problem. I wasn't rehydrating properly, and it was like that, 92 here. I mean, that's that's where people mess up. You know, I had a, I had a friend tell me a long time ago: if you want to avoid a hangover, you try to chug as much water before you go to bed that night because the headache yeah the hangover all comes from being just dehydrated dehydrated for sure um, i definitely felt it now so you had your uncle there how many of yeah. the uh, lamo well uh, you said it's on your mom's side so yeah, it's not there, the there was only one other there was only one other lamo my sister was there oh uh, see now i'm not trying to be rude no, but I'm, no. I, I'm, I'm very interested in what your sister looks like. Oh, she looks like my sister. Well, of course. God damn it. I'm not trying to, like, you know, come on to your sister. No, no, no. no. I don't. No, I don't know how to describe her. She looks like my sister. Like, I don't know. Is she, she doesn't like look like anybody with famous. Long hair? Is she like you with no. long hair? No, she looks better than me, for sure. Yeah. I would say that. I got this weird, I got the weird big Alamo nose. It looks like I'm a fucking cocaine machine. I, it's just, I'm fucked. Yeah, but you don't have, look, you could be cursed with that big fucking noggin I have. Like, I got a yeah. humongous head. You do, you do got a seven head for some reason. <laughs> no, it's almost eight inches. Uh, and I've talked about this. I, I was never, like, gifted enough to play varsity football. I only played JV for one year. And they actually yeah. had to order a fucking helmet specialty for me to wear. Why don't That's you use that as a – you should use the forehead line as an opening line and tell ladies, hey, I'm eight inches on the forehead. <laughs> what were you thinking? But, but everybody, you know, and you know how your parents, they're always going to, like, you know, talk you up. They were like, oh, don't worry. You'll grow into your head. And it never happened. It, it never happened. Your parents told you it would grow into your head? Yeah, they were like, oh, your body will catch up. Your head won't look as big as it is. And now since I've lost so they knew weight. That, what's that? Yeah. yeah I, oh, I, so they, I was going to say they knew, that, they knew that you had a honker for a forehead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now tell me about your uncle. I got to tell you, I talked to him. For about five minutes. Yeah. And yeah, he's very cool. I, interesting. He, um, he's a huge Bubba fan from way back. He's actually the first one that told me to start listening to him because I just listened to Howard and stuff in the mornings and then like yeah. Pharrell at night. Like, who's this afternoon, dude? So I told him that we're doing some stuff together, working on the show. And uh, he's like, oh, really? Tuttle from the Bubba show? I was like, yeah, you <laughs> want to talk to him? I'll get him on the phone right now. He's like, no, you won't. I was like, yeah, watch this. And then, uh, yeah, so, yeah, it was super cool. Thanks again for doing that, man. Uh, no, he enjoyed that was, it. That was 
was you great, man. Later on. That that yeah. I mean that I mean I had a great time and I I would love to have him on the podcast. I mean if you'd be okay with that, I I would love to have him on. Yeah, I'll have to see what he's doing. Maybe I can go up to Lincoln and get him on there sometime. And and we were talking about being an iron worker. He didn't know that I was an iron worker at one time. Yeah, a lot of people forget about that that you actually had real jobs before radio. <laughs> exactly. Um. Now, I want to talk to you about this. So, um, last night, and I, I, I think I did this subconsciously, that I posted a picture, you know, where my little face buff here. Yeah. But I, but I, but I took the picture with my shirt off. Everybody, everybody uh, made a big deal, and they were like, oh, we see what you're doing, Toddle. You're posting a picture, you know, you're just trying to show off your new look because you're working out and stuff. But everybody was fucking with me about my nipples. And I never noticed that. Everybody was like fucked up nips. Yeah, they no, it's not fucked up nips. Now the medication that I was on, the Resperidol, there's this big lawsuit going on. And I don't have breasts, but I really do think that medication grew my nips out. I, I don't – and now, would it, would it be really? bad if I had a case? Would it make me litigious if, you know, like if I could get some money out of them lengthening my nipples, uh, should I go for the money? I don't think so, brother. No? I mean, I think no, I should. Don't hurt. No, I don't think you should stop. Go for the money. Fuck it. Look at Hogan. Okay. Yeah. So, so I should definitely go for it. But I mean, yeah. I mean, since you're telling me, I'll give you the point. Like Hogan promised Brent Hatley on the, uh, you know, the Fruity Pebbles deal. Did you ever hear oh, about yeah. that? Yeah. Whatever happened with that? Uh, Brent didn't. Brent got fucking dog piss, Willie. Like oh. absolutely got. Nothing. And so he basically got hat lead. Yes, yes, yes. But um, but yeah, that that medication is supposed to make your uh, breast tissue grow more. And and I really don't oh, have God. like I don't have I don't have breasts. I just think that it went straight to my nipples, and everybody was but but then everybody was calling me out. By saying, oh, Toto, you're just wanting to, you know, pose down for the deal. And I'm like, I didn't do it on purpose, but I do think sometimes your brain does things. Like, you you don't do it on purpose, but you do yeah. some shit. It's like you're on autopilot almost. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I, I agree 100%. So, um, yeah. And so, honestly, it's not like you're, it's not like you're posing down doing the Hogan like arms thing. You know what I mean? You took a picture for God's sakes. People got way too much free time. But I gotta tell you, man, there was there was some chicks, some girls that I had actually gone out on dates with that were kind of like, you know, showing me some attention a little bit. Nice. See, that's not bad. And the thing is, it's like I think one of the things that me and you have in common is that we really don't, mm -hmm. we don't know, well, yeah, but we don't give a fuck, oh, hit the water again, hit the water. Um, I will. But I think me and you, what we have in common is that we really don't give a fuck what people think about us or what people think about how we look. Am I, am I right by saying that? Yeah, we're just two dudes with less than $20 in our pocket trying to keep around a business. It's about dead. Yeah, That's why podcasting um, and stuff is the, the future. But, but, you know, is it weird or is it bad of me, though, to like those compliments? Because I'm not a superficial type guy, but it just shows that hard work. I was able to, you know, kick an addiction – and 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 better myself you know and and it just proves that when i put my mind to something just like this podcast that i can get shit done 
And it also shows yourself that you really didn't need the booze to do anything. You know what I mean? The booze was not helping you. No, it was not. It was inhibiting you. See, but you know what? If I'm just being honest, and this is, and, and you know, like we've talked off the air, and you know my opinion on things, but I'm playing nice with everybody. But I feel, yeah. and I look at what's going on, and I feel like Lummox is going down that road that I went down on Bubba. Have you been listening to Bubba's show? I have not, but when drinking. I checked in the last time, I when the last time I checked in, I I noticed that they were doing the having Lummox drink more during the show, which yes. I, I never thought made for good radio. Now maybe a one one off thing, you know, like when Ron Fez would do it and they would have Fez get hammered. That was yeah. funny. But every day it's not funny. That's not that's enabling an addiction, man, for real. Yeah. I mean I mean yeah, I mean, I don't, oh, here, this is another thing I want to talk to you about, okay? Now, mm -hmm. you know, Bubba is on Florida Man Radio in Orlando, okay? Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I did. I never tweeted Florida Man Radio's Twitter account or Facebook account. But wouldn't it be smart? I'm not saying I'm bigger than Bubba, but what I'm saying is, is why would you block me on all your social media? What the fuck did I do? Like Florida Man, the radio station on Twitter, but mm -hmm. Florida Man Radio on Facebook blocked me. What the, and this was when I was still on Bubba's show. What the fuck did I do? Uh... I don't want. I don't know if it's necessarily something you did, or it might have been somebody saying stuff. You know what I mean? Just fuck this son of a bitch on all social medias and stuff. You don't need to be on there. I know, you know, but could be behind the scenes shit. Nobody knows. Or, or it could be a random person that I worked with in the past that is just but like you know what? Fuck total. I'm just gonna block him. Maybe. I don't know. It, you know, you've worked I, on radio. You, know, you want to know what bothers yeah. me the most about radio is the the uh, childish bullshit that goes on. Like, for real. Like, it, it's it's almost high school type shit, in my opinion. It's fucking, it's fucking click shit for real, dude. Even yeah, at the small shitters that I worked up here in Montana, they all had their little groups. And you know what? When you don't play fucking nice with them and you be a fucking lone wolf like I was in school, I don't give a fuck about their little groups. That's why they didn't fucking, they knew that I was good at what I fucking did, but they didn't fucking, I don't know. They didn't appreciate it till a year gone. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, Charlie just shut up and did his fucking job. He didn't play into bullshit. It's, but but it's, it's not about, now when I tell people about this, they don't believe me. And hopefully you can back me up on this. But mm -hmm. radio, radio, it's not about how talented you are. It's not about how hard you work. It's about who you know and who you're friends yeah. with. Because I and, – and, and the thing is, is when I've said this before, everybody said, oh, you're just jealous. But that's not true because there have been so many more people – and I don't want people to think I suck my own dick or I have a big ego, but I know for a fact there's a lot of people that are way further ahead than me that I know for a fact I am way more talented than them. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Now it's about who you know and how many followers you have. But why is that, though? Because Be you would think that – Radio? Why is it in, mm -hmm. like that in radio? Because it's yeah. all about sales, brother. You know that. They don't give a fuck yeah. about talent. They don't give a fuck about what people are doing. Why do you think it's the same three fucking Aerosmith songs and Van Halen songs? Because people don't give a fuck. That's why they're listening to Spotify. That's why they're going other places for their music and shit like that. The only, time, the only things that are still around that kind of do that are either sports talk. There's very few regular talk shows around anymore. 
and political talk. That's about it. But again, at the end of the day, they need to sell advertising to keep the fucking lights on because nobody gives a fuck about the talent unless you've got a huge name. And even then, they really don't care. Did you ever listen to Jim Phillips on Real Radio 104.1 at all? Um, not when he was on, but when I started going back before I started working with you, I went back and listened to some of the shows and clips on YouTube and stuff. He brought up a great point, and I, I thought everything – I thought when he said this, it was complete bullshit. But he said when, when he first started in radio that you could drive around the country, and you could tell where you were at in the country just by the music and stuff that you heard. You, you see what I'm saying? But he said that it's yeah. – and, and the reason he talked about that is that radio has become so bland that everything is the same. But back in the day, regionally, you would hear – because people took chances, they would play local stuff, and you could tell yeah. where you were at in the United States just by turning on the radio. Exactly, man. And that kind of not localized radio, but more specialty radio is dead. It's gone, man. You go to any state, they've got fucking Jack FM or Alt, whatever, 92, who gives a fuck. And it's <laughs> now, the same it, fucking it, shit music. Is Jack FM that, that format that right after Howard left that they started where they were playing? It, Jack FM was kind of like, oh, it's a format. It's like listening to your iPod type deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's like listening to your iPod if you jammed commercials after songs that are really long. <laughs> yeah. All they do, well, yeah, working in the music side, all they do is just backload the fuck out of the commercials. So while you're getting... 45 minutes of classic rock, which is never really 45 minutes. It's usually about 38. The rest of that is all ads. Now, do you remember, were you in radio? Because Clear Channel did that whole, like, thing going on where they had that less is more thing. So they kind of, here, I'll explain it to you, okay? So we were always taking, like, two to three commercial breaks an hour. But... They were like, oh, we're going to take shorter commercial breaks, but we're going to hit four spot breaks in an hour. So they would play like three minute in the first break, three minute in the second, three minute in the third, three minute in the fourth. But in the second break, they kind of threw on that extra spot and made it seem like, oh, we're not throwing in an extra spot. So what they would do when you were going into your second break, they would play one commercial. Oh, hello, I lost you. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It just oh. went off, came back on. So, so, but what? Back to what I was saying. So they would. They were so sneaky. They would throw in an extra minute spot. So going into the second break, they would play a one minute spot, but then they would come back and give you like a thirty second to a minute maybe like a news break or a promo and then they yeah. would go back into the rest of the spot and it just completely fucked the flow of any momentum especially when you're when you're working in talk radio yeah you have to take four spots or four 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 commercial breaks in an hour it, it just was completely like lunacy. I mean, it was crazy. It's crazy how radio is so segmented out now. I had to do all the clocks and formats when they had the ESPN channel here. So I had to go through there and physically put in fucking clocks so it would break at the right time when Stephen A. Smith took a fucking break. And, the, and all of the show was segments, dude. Like, at most, there was like, the longest segment was like maybe 15 minutes. But yeah. everything else is like, you know, 10-minute segment, five-minute segment. So it's just, that's all it is nowadays. And, and that, that was the other thing, okay? Let me ask you this. What, what is your opinion on how ratings are done in radio? How ratings? Yeah, like, like, like for example. 
Yeah, well, well, back in the day, it used to be a diary, and then people would fill yeah. it out. But a lot of people don't realize, like, for example, Tampa is like a million or over a million people. But they, they group Tampa and St. Pete together. So, but okay. it's it, – but, but the ratio – of people like for example that used to get diaries or or now people that would get the meters it is so small it, i mean it's it's probably a little over a hundred people represent over a million people in that area how the or, fuck is that fair or in some cases it's just one shed yes <laughs> Well, well, I didn't say that. Oh, that was chart. <laughs> I know that's all on me, brother. But what so I'm saying I'm, is, I'm saying if there's an extension cord run into a shed, nobody really knows what's going on. Did anything really happen? All right, I will, I will, I will backfill what you just said. Everything that Bubba said about the rating system was true, though. I mean. You, I mean, you might not agree with me on that, but it is true how fucked up the system is. Do you, do you realize that they have the technology? Do you realize that they have the technology if they wanted to, that they could pick a, a reader that could tell what people are listening to? Like, you just go to the busiest intersection in a city, and you could find out and get a true reading of what yeah. everybody's listening to. And exactly. it, 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 is, it is pathetic how they do the ratings. It really is. Yeah, and I was listening to an old uh, Neil Rogers. Actually, it's the very last show that he did, and they were talking about uh, jumping up the ratings and stuff like that, where they would take this lesser station and uh, and use it to make a bigger station even bigger so they could sell more ad space and stuff like that. So it's definitely not – there's some shadiness going on in the rating system for sure. Yeah, there's some guy running his boat in the background here. Let me see if you can hear this. Can you hear that? Oh, yeah. That's great. And that is so bad for your boat to Just run – What do you mean? Off. Dry running it is not good yeah. for the boat, go figure. Yeah, no, he's just dry running it. Out the, oh, look at that woman. She does not, definitely not need to be wearing a bikini. Um, oh, God. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, I mean, you've lived in Florida. You know what I'm talking about. I know. I've seen. Speaking of Florida, and I know you were hungover, uh, yeah. did you see the fucking numbers that came out of Florida today? For the newly infected uh, coronavirus patients. No, are they super high? 15,300. Oh, God. And yeah. Now, how do you feel? You know, I've always looked at science. That, that's the thing about scientists. Scientists do not deal in opinions. They just deal in facts, right? I mean... That's what they deal with. Well, unless you're a Diaco, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just uh, No, yeah, I would agree with you. But but what I'm saying is, you know, even though fifteen thousand three hundred, and that beats New York City at its peak, like that is the highest one day total out of any state in our country, and everybody wants oh. to say, well, they're just testing more people. And then they even back it up more with, well, everybody that's infected are young people. That's not necessarily true. I I understand that, but what they're not what yeah. they're not realizing is that the younger people they all have older relatives that they come in contact mm -hmm. with, older people, yeah. and that's all going to come back to them. Yeah, that's why I was, uh, I didn't know if my grandparents were going to come over for the whole barbecue because I don't want to get them sick. And, no, you, uh, can't, they can't, what's you just can't, you can't take that chance, though. Yeah. 
You really For can. Sure. So what is your week looking like, Charlie? Like, I mean, you're off tomorrow, right? Yeah, we'll probably record some time in the afternoon. I got to do some bits. It's been nutty here. I, mean, I haven't had any time to record people who have been here 24-7, so I'm going to work on that in the morning. And uh, just slinging weed this week, man, Tuesday through Friday at dispensary. Are you worried? Uh, no, you know what? I'm not going to blow it. Did you work on that Aubrey self? I'm not even going to say the last name. Because <laughs> I thought, I, when I told you that, I was like, oh, shit. He was like, you seem fired up about doing that. Yes, I wrote, I actually don't have a notebook here. It's down at the other house, but I wrote a whole script already. I just need to voice it and put a little music behind it. All right, Charlie. Well, listen, uh, if you're down to record tomorrow, I would love to have you on. Um, you know, because... Yeah. I really think we got some good shit going on between me and you. I would like, you know, what, what, and a lot of people don't realize this is that I would love to see what we could do if we were in the same room. And a lot of people are like, well, you guys are talking right now. There's a difference, and you've worked in radio, just yeah. being in the same room with somebody. And I don't know if you're giving off, like, some pheromones. I'm not, you know, in a non-gay way. Like, maybe yeah. we're, we're, we're vibing off of each other. And, and that was the other thing. Like, I mean, it's work for Bubba. But I, I, always, it, I always found it so weird not to be able to see him during the show. Yes. It's very – I mean – the way his studio set up is super cool. He does have one of a great facility there, but not being able to see people and stabbing into conversations and stuff like that. It's like almost the equivalent to uh, like a yield sign. You just kind of creep out there or a roundabout. Even like person's coming in the roundabout, you don't know if that second person's going to come in there, so you can't really get your joke in. Yeah. It's kind of jammed up. But when you can see what's going on, there's nobody in the roundabout. You can just bang right through that motherfucker. That's what... So being in the same room is definitely key, and it, it will only make the show sound better. Yeah. All right, Charlie, tell people how they can check you out if they want to find you. Um, hit me up on the uh, Twitter machine there, at CCA Production. Just look for me there. There's links to the Facebook on there already. So. All right, Charlie. Well, I appreciate the time, man. I hope you feel better. I mean, give me on that scale. Oh, yeah. Give me a scale of one to ten how you're feeling right now when it comes to the hangover. Um, I would say three. It was at an eleven earlier. What you need to do, and I'm and listen, I was a professional alcoholic. You gotta mm -hmm. fucking I'm not saying get drunk, but you need to fucking drink something with alcohol in it. I know, that's the next step. All it's right, the next Charlie. Level one. I appreciate everything, man, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? For sure. All right, man. Hey, I